Hello EFD squad and welcome back to Transfer Review where me and Pato take a closer look at silly season. Obviously things aren't in full swing. It's yeah, opened but nothing has happened which is okay mm. because we can now do part two of our big review. We assessed some top sides uh, last week and now we're doing the best of the rest. Patrick Van Strong, we're starting with Real Madrid, aren't we? Yes, we are. Now, they've been linked with a host of big name attackers this summer. Neymar, Salah, Azar. There's a, there's a, there's a pattern there. The uh, and they look set to let Gareth Bale leave Spain as well. I think that finally he's going to move on to give them some money to rebuild their squad. But apparently Isco could follow him out of the door. Now, the 26-year-old has made 30 league appearances this season, but a third of those came from the substitutes bench. He's only started 21 league games, which isn't really enough for a player of his quality. Um, OK Diario and Sport. OK Diario, not that reliable. Sport tend to like to stir things up at Real Madrid because they are a Barcelona supporting paper. But they report that the attacking midfielder would be interested in a move with his current wage only standing at around 100 thousand euros a week Bargain. and you imagine that you know one of these big clubs would be able to improve on that and my god there are some clubs interested here Chelsea Arsenal Liverpool Man City Bayern Munich and Juventus are all linked and that means that he could name his price but so could Real Madrid uh, but I don't know I kind of think that this is a guy who if he's available you try and get him yeah, and despite these limited minutes, his output hasn't really faltered, has it? In 1,700 minutes in La Liga, Isco has still produced seven goals and seven assists in 21 starts, like Patrick said, which is better than the prodigious uh, young talent Asensio on six goals, six assists, who's actually played 50 minutes more this season. Mm. I think that would take a lot of fans by surprise if you said Asensio has clocked up more minutes in La Liga, sure. maybe outside of Spain than someone like Isco because it seems that he, he goes through he goes through uh, periods, doesn't he, where he's in Zidane's favour and then he yeah. drops out and oh will he start the Champions League final, will he start El Clasico and, and it's, it's very confusing when he's that good. Um, and he also leads Real Madrid in other areas too, completes the most dribbles in that team which is no mean feat with three completed per match and he's fourth in key passes uh, with 2.4 a game. That's actually the same as Ribéry and Messi. So from the centre of the park or in that floating number 10 position, he's laying on as many chances for his teammates uh, than wide kind of advanced talent too. Um, and he could, he's got that tactical flexibility, hasn't he? He can feature in a three-man uh, midfield, or like I said, is that floating number 10. Um, but Real Madrid, like you said, could name their price. Uh, he's got a buyout clause of 500 million euros mm -hmm. and uh, claims mm -hmm. that Zidane has made him feel very important in Madrid. So not pushing for it personally, maybe. Not publicly, um, anyway. But if Zidane doesn't win the Champions League, uh, then his future could be in dispute. And all of a sudden, all these stars that he's managed to play K on this rotation basis mm. might just fancy their chances elsewhere. Uh, like you said, Isco could probably name his price at a host of top, top clubs, couldn't they? Uh, Pep Guardiola been a long time admirer of his. What do you guys think? Should Isco leave Real Madrid? And if he did, where should he go? Let us know in the comments. Next up, it's everybody's favourite club, the footballing wing of Stormfront. It's Chelsea. They're a disgrace to football. They're a disgrace to London. Zach Jellab supports them. He's a disgrace. What are they up to now? Well, Patrick, apparently they're looking to sell Alvaro Morata. We discussed this in Sunday Vibes mm. a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? It appears that if they can get the right price, they might be willing to cut their losses, which is a little bit harsh. I don't think he's had that bad a first season. Now, Juventus and AC Milan are two of the interested parties in the striker who scored 11 and assisted six in his debut campaign. I don't think, having read a couple of articles from Adam Digby, that AC Milan will be pursuing him. Apparently, they've rejected uh, FFP's fines and are taking them to a tribunal Quality. where people think they will be fined even more. And yes. we don't know where the money's quite coming from at AC, do we? I'll Monopoly brush up money. on that for Continental Club. But yes, Juventus certainly got his admirers there and they could definitely afford him, especially if they sell Higuain, which Ooh. 
you know, he could feature in our transfer shocker. Maybe. Spoiler alert, stick around until the end. Um, yes, Alvar Morata, though, has struggled since the turn of the year, hasn't he? Only three of his goals have come after January, and according to the Telegraph, Abramovich is ready to spend big again after being a little bit more prudent in recent seasons to the tune of £100 million for the big poll, Ooh. which sounds about right. Ooh. Yeah? Yeah, at his age, I think that's all right. I would probably stick with Alvar Morata. I mean, I'd definitely get him some new hair product. That pomade could kill a seal. But Lewandowski, 30 years old. Morata, 25. And you know what? Lever took him a season to find his feet at Bayern, despite, you know, playing in an inferior league with better players. Yeah, like Lewandowski arrived at Bayern Munich as already one of the best strikers in the league. He only got 17 in his first season there. He played over 30 games. Um, Morata has been involved in 17 in his first season. And actually, Chelsea are a much more defensive side. Like Chelsea's system this season has basically been not dissimilar to kind of Lucien Favre team, where the idea is that pretty much everyone defends and then two guys do all the attacking. And those are Azar and whoever's playing up front. Like it's a pretty thankless task. Um, but Lewandowski in that first season at Bayern involved in the goal every 113 minutes. Morata been involved in the goal every 122 minutes. It's not that big a difference, really. And all his underlying numbers look great. Gets off three shots inside the box a game, completes 1.4 dribbles, so he can do some of that work that Diego Costa used to do, running the channels. Um, he creates 1.5 chances. That's about the same as Paul Pogba and Hung Min Son this season. So he's able to bring his teammates into play as well. I mean, mm. he's a really good, versatile, intelligent striker. And particularly in the air, he's been a real weapon for them. This season, he got seven headed goals. That's a record only four players across Europe can better. So he actually got more than Harry Kane, than Cristiano Ronaldo. Like it, that, that connection between him and Cesar Azpilicueta was almost impossible for, for defences to deal with. He was so good at peeling off to the back post. However, there's a little part of me that could see why Chelsea might be okay with a short-term move here. Uh, they've got Michi Batshuayi, who's 24. They've got Tammy Abraham, who's 20. So arguably, if they get in a 30-year-old and he only lasts them, say, two seasons before they move him on, it's not actually a disaster because they'll still have two very promising strikers right behind him. And I can imagine Batshuayi and Abraham will actually want to move on if Morata stays there because he's so close to their age. Um, plus, Morata may well be agitating for this move. He, there was a story this week that he bumped into Juve sporting director Paratici, uh, I think, think in Turin, just, just wandering around the streets of Turin, mm. which sounds like an interesting uh, coincidence. And he's, of course, been left out of Spain's World Cup squad, so he will not be happy with how this season's gone at all. What would you do if you were a Chelsea fan and therefore a racist? Uh, would you move Morata on or would you just get in a fight with someone of a different ethnicity to you? Let us know in the comments. Next up is PSG for the sakes of variety, but things are going to be interesting at the Parc de France this season with Thomas Tuchel in charge, aren't they? Yeah, I was kind of hoping that what we'd see is a, a reflorescence of their intelligent transfer policy years ago, you know, when they brought in Verratti from Pescara and things like that. So but you're going to go back to Pauletta. Does not seem like they're going to do that. Wow, Pauletta. And Chris and all those guys. Shit. Good anyway, uh, they look set to revamp their goalkeeping options. Alphonse Areola hasn't really convinced this season. Kevin Trapp is out of favour. And of course, the way PSG function now is they go for names you know. So it looks like they're going to be bringing in Jean Luigi Buffon. Uh, but of course, he's 40. He's hardly a long term option. And apparently, according to Belgian reporter Christophe Terreur, uh, they have also spoken to Chelsea about Thibaut Courtois. Now, he's out of contract in 2019, so he's got some leverage, and he's so far stalled on discussing mm. a new deal. Now, of course, we've all heard the links with Real Madrid, and Tavarra also says that Atletico Madrid might be interested in him if they were to sell Jan Oblak, and Courtois' kids actually live in Madrid. So you could understand him wanting to go back to Spain. However, PSG have the money, the fee might be lowered by the contract situation, and if Real Madrid aren't willing to go big, if Atletico Madrid aren't able to go big, then PSG seem like a good option with Chelsea not wanting to lose the 26-year-old on a free transfer. And I don't know. I can see why PSG would go for him. However, I don't think he's that great. Yeah, because his feet are so f***ing far away from his head. The mm. guy is an absolute giant. What is he, 6'6"? Yeah. Maybe. He's big. Potentially. 
Um, but like you, I'm a little bit skeptical as to whether he's a significant upgrade on Ariola. Now, the headline stats look very decent. 16 clean sheets for the big Belgian in 36 appearances last season. That's 0.42 per game. This is similar to Ariola, who kept 15 in 31. That's 0.52 per game. But I suppose Chelsea did have quite a poor season. Not traditionally very porous, though, in defence, are they? And they concede. They don't concede high quality chances. Mm. Conte, signature of his. Chelsea, pretty mean when it comes to conceding shots. Um, however, Ariola in a PSG side which sort of ran rampant um, in league in this season. So maybe not the best to compare those stats. However, Ariola making 2.6 saves per goal he concedes, while Courtois is only making two, which is very average perhaps the most damning stat we could sort of unearth. Uh, and doubts remain over Courtois' ability with his feet. His pass accuracy was around 75% in 2017-18, compared to 92% by Areola. And obviously that does kind of intimate a different ethos, playing style. But with Thomas Tuchel liking to build things from the back, I imagine that Courtois will be asked to use his feet an awful lot more yeah, yeah, yeah. and question marks remain as to whether he'll be able to do that. Um, and we can see this from Courtois' sort of passing habits. Last season, his average uh, pass was 35 metres and Ariola's was only 23. Uh, so Ariola a little bit more adept at that short game. Um, I, if he's really, if he's winding down his contract at Chelsea, sure. He really wants to move to Madrid to be um, with, his, with his kids and his wife or his girlfriend, I'm not sure if he's married, you know. Uh, then PSG would seem like an odd move and that would mean another three years, wouldn't it, no doubt. If they're going to spend a significant sum, um, it wouldn't be on a flight risk, would it? So I think Courtois is, is holding out, it would seem from the outside looking in on a move to Madrid. And maybe, maybe that, but maybe if he doesn't go, that's the theory of the PSG, they're like, we get him Buffon, he does us for a year, then Courtois on a free and we can bring him in. So, you know, like they, they could still remain open to a move, it just it just depends what Real Madrid do in the meantime, I think. PSG would throw a shitload of cash in, wouldn't they? Yeah. Not sure how much is done at Chelsea, but what do you guys think? Where should Courtois go? What else did we talk about? Who should be in PSG sticks? Yes. Damn. The final team of our bumper transfer preview is Manchester City. They may spend some money this summer, who would have thought? Yeah, after two years and five signings, costing a combined £235 million, apparently Pep Guardiola still isn't overly happy with his defensive situation. Now, this is despite them only conceding 6.3 shots per game last season. I think only 2.3 of them when they got through were on target, which is obscene. 6.3, by the way, is about half as many as Manchester United. And I think Edison, even if he'd let in every shot on target at the Etihad, Man City still would have been crown champions, which is just silly, isn't it? These are all, you know, the best figures in the Premier League since records began back in 2009. But this is despite only conceding 27 goals last season. So ostensibly looking for another defender might seem a bit OTT, Patrick Van Straten, but like all the great sides and the great managers, Pep wants to strengthen from a position of strength and going after a young centre-back, actually pretty prudent given that their defence is the oldest uh, section of their team, almost three years older than their attack on uh, 26.3. Otamendi's 30, company is 32, and despite that renaissance at the end of the season, probably can't be relied on over the course of a season. Um, and actually, the big Belgian has only made 41 league appearances out of a possible 114 over the last three seasons. So whilst he's somewhat halted his decline, it's still coming. As a result, The Guardian are reporting that the Catalan is after Ajax's 18-year-old Matthias de Ligt, who has also been linked with Barcelona and Tottenham. Every side that play the football I love want this kid. What is it about him that everyone's getting a boner over? Well, despite being young, he is pretty experienced. He's got two top flight seasons under his belt and he already plays in a possession side. Now his passing numbers don't quite compare to companies at the moment, uh, with 56 passes completed the game to the Belgians, 83. That's crazy. But that's kind of just pep football, you know, they're a ball dominant side 
and that kind of boosts everyone's stats in time when it comes to passing. And De Ligt has an excellent passing accuracy. 90% of his balls find their target company on 92%. Um, but they both are kind of aggressive with their passing. Uh, both the City captain and De Ligt uh, play forward around 78% of the time. So they're looking upfield and playing aggressively. He's also a more active defender. He wins possession 2.7 times a game. Company's down on 1.7. Now there remains some greenness in his game. He's still pretty callow. He makes four defensive errors. He's made four defensive errors this season and two of those led to goals. So yeah, there's some sloppiness that needs to be weeded out. Company has made just one defensive error this season. Um, fees reported at 50 million pounds. It sounds like a lot, but that's only gonna rise, especially with interest from other super clubs around Europe. I kind of feel like if you want him, this is not a bad time to get in on him, especially as they do have Stones and Laporte. They've definitely got another season or two with Otamendi. So if you get him in now, you can gradually blood him. I think he can deputize at right back. And I don't know, I think, I think that this is kind of a smart move. The Netherlands aren't going to the World Cup, so he's got a whole summer to work on his fitness and be prepared. So if I were Man City, I probably would pay this. Mm. Yeah, where would you go if you were Matthias de Ligt though? Barcelona, Man City, oh, it's up then. It's an up time. Last but not least, we have our transfer shocker, and this one is Iguain to Chelsea. Patrick van Straten, please unpick this move. Yeah, well, this is an alternative to the Lewandowski rumour. Tuto Sport are claiming that Chelsea will instead look to bring in Gonzalo Iguain this summer. Now, they're not doing a great job of making this story look plausible. Uh, one issue of Tuto Sport claimed that he'd cost £88 million. The next said he'll only cost £44 million. And to be honest, this is the sort of bullshit we get from tabloids all the time. They, they see that uh, Maurizio Sarri, you know, who managed Iguain at Napoli, might take over Chelsea. And perspicacious as ever, they say, hang on, Maybe he'll sign Higuain, who paid for him at Napoli. He'd be amazing. He's worn a blue shirt before. Get him in. Uh, I think it's bollocks. I think That's it's how stupid. I would one hundred. Yeah, well, he's an idiot. I would one hundred percent not sign Gonzalo Higuain. He's old. He's declined a lot this season. He's certainly not an improvement on Morata. If we're talking about keeping Morata rather than going for Lewandowski, definitely keep Morata rather than going for Gonzalo Higuain. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if, if you're going to sell Morata for having an underwhelming season, then you don't go big for Gonzalo Higuain, who's 16 goals in Serie A last year, is his worst season in the past eight years, Great. I believe. So you would imagine that decline has set in. Um, Sarri actually had more success as well with Dries Mertens at front than Higuain, uh, taking 86 and 91 points with the Belgian at leading the line compared to 82 in that season when Gonzalo went supernova. I did yeah. love that. Patrick on the last day. Yeah? Yep. Memorable. Um, and I do love it when the Napoli fans and Italians in general chant his name. Sounds really fascist, but you, you are know, fascist. Cool. Um, okay. So I think, Patrick, how do you like this for size? If Chelsea do get Sarri in, I imagine that Eden Hazard will probably be a better option. And he's already there. You know, another player who's come inside from the left, can play in that central role, can maybe be converted into a second striker. Um, yeah, who's going to pay 88 million for Gonzalo Higuain? I can't eat a f cheeseburger without putting a stone on. Boom. Layers. So that's all we have time for here on Transfer Review. Patrick and Strom, what is going on elsewhere that might tickle the pickle of whoever is watching? Uh, 90 plus one facts, make sure that you subscribe to that okay, channel. Okay, okay. Uh, it's actually really good. And also stay right here on EuroFootball Daily cool, for this cool, week's cool, cool. Stat Wars the Champions, which I believe is McCubbin versus uh, Bobby Seagull. The girl. The challenge. Robert mate. Eagle. Yeah, the seagulls all over him, like on a chip, mate. That, See you go. that was for Zach.